We have just completed an overview of Adira's technology and now it's time to actually build something with it. Hi, I'm Brendan, DevRel Engineer at Hashcraft and I'll be walking you through this task. Please do follow along as you watch this video as this is intended to be hands-on. All you need are a browser and a GitHub account. To do so, simply visit github.com slash hederadev slash tokens cyoa tutorial or scan the QR code on the screen now. This is part of the choose your own adventure style Hedera tokens tutorial where you will learn how to mint and transfer tokens the EVM way, the Hedera native way, and even another interoperable way with both at the same time. Here is what we'll be building. A fungible token, a fungible common token using Hedera token service. Um, an ERC20 token using Hedera smart contract service and an interoperability demonstration using HSCS to interact with an HTS token. You are encouraged to take a choose your own adventure approach to this tutorial. You can do them in any order that you prefer. The recommended order, if you are unfamiliar with Solidity Web3 in, uh, in general, is um, the HTS task followed by the HSCS task followed by the interoperability task. And the recommended order, if you are familiar with Solidity or Web3 technology, especially EVM development, is um, the HSCS token followed by the HCS token followed by the interoperability task. Before we begin, you'll need to set up your development environment. Um, thankfully, there's a really easy way to do this, which is to do it on Gitpod. So, um, in the Hedera Tokens Choose Your Own Adventure Tutorial right page. Um, in the README right at the top, you'll see this big green open GitPod button. Right, right click on that, open a new tab. And if you have a GitHub account, um, you're, you, you can set up, be up and running really quickly. So if this is your first, first time using Gitpod, then you'll be prompted to sign into Gitpod with your GitHub account and authorize the Gitpod app with your GitHub account. Subsequently, you won't be prompted to do that again. So next, you'll have to wait for the Gitpod container to load. And I'll just crank up the font size so it's easier to read. And you should see a Visual Studio Code IDE inside of your browser window or tab itself. So, so this includes the file navigation page on the left, the code editor at the top over here, um, and a terminal at the bottom. So this repo is configured such that it will trigger the setup scripts required automatically upon starting. You'll notice that there are three terminals over in the bottom right. One for installing dependencies, um, another for RPC Relay and finally one for main and you don't really need to care about the first two so just focus on the main terminal. Speaking of which, after a wait of a few seconds you should see this line over here um, initialize.env file Now this setup script interactively prompts you to input the values that will configure your application. In most cases you can simply accept the default values so this should be pretty easy. Enter a BIP39 seed phrase. Um, and, and so what, what, what this script is doing is it's helping you to initialize all of the values that you'll need in this .end file, right? Um, so for a BIP39 seed phrase, um, just generate a new one and you can read more about BIP39 and BIP44 if you'd like to. Um, then um, enter a number of accounts generate from your BIP39 seed phrase. So again, leave blank to accept the default, which is to several, uh, generate several accounts. Next up, enter your preferred JSON RPC endpoint URL. So leave blank to accept the default as well, which is to use the Hedera JSON RPC relay instance that Gitpod has run for you automatically in the background, specifically in this tab, uh, in this terminal. If you are running this on your own computer, the default will be localhost 7546 instead, which you'll need to run manually. Enter your operator account, ECDSA private key and hexade uh, hexadecimal encoded ECDSA private um, key. Now leave blank to accept the default. And if you do so, this will use the first account generated from the seed phrase earlier. 
please ensure that you have funded um, this particular address. So what you'll want to do is select the address, copy it, and then hold down Command or Control key and then click on that. And that will open it in a new tab. So visit um, Hedera Fawcett, paste the address in here that you just copied, pass the capture, press the confirm button. And within a second or so, you should get a message that says HBAR successfully sent. And you don't need to do anything else here. Just go back to the Git pod tab and enter. And it'll just test that the account has indeed been created and funded. And now, and then subsequently it goes ahead and creates the other accounts. And then it'll output a preview of the .n file that it is about to overwrite. Type Y for yes, hit enter. And then you'll see the .n file update over here. All right. So now if we take a look at the .n file, it has been populated with all of the values that you, that you saw earlier on. And now you're all set up and ready to move on to one of the tasks. So let's close the .n file. Time to choose your own adventure. Click on one of the following videos linked on the screen or in the description once you have made your pick. If you have prior EVM development experience, I recommend doing HSCS token task next. If you have no prior blockchain or Web3 development experience, I recommend doing the HTS token task next. Either way, see you in the next one. In this task, you will deploy a new fungible token on Hedera token service and transfer it from one account to another. You'll be using the Hedera SDK and use JavaScript. No solidity or smart contracts necessary. Hi, I'm Brendan, DevRel Engineer at Hashgraph, and I'll be walking you through this task. Please do follow along as you watch this video, as this is intended to be hands-on. All you need are a browser and a GitHub account. To do so, simply visit github.com slash Hedera dev slash Hedera token CYOA tutorial or scan the QR code on the screen now. This is part of the choose your own adventure style Hedera tokens tutorial where you will learn how to mint and transfer tokens the EVM way, the Hedera native way, and even another interoperable way with both at the same time. Let's switch back to Gitpod and inside of here, open up token HTS and script token HTS.js. And this is the file that we will be running. Um, this is the script that we're going to run. Note the import statements at the top where we are importing um, classes from the Hedera JavaScript SDK. So go to the terminal over here and cd into token-hts. So, and run this particular script file by typing dot slash script and then hit tab to autocomplete and enter. So that will run this script and you'll see um, each of these uh, lines, this starts running the script and you'll see some initial output that indicates that the script has been running and confirmation that it has parsed some information from the .n file, which you have already set up. Next, you'll see a line in purple, right? Uh, with a line underneath it saying hit return when ready to proceed, right? Uh, these pause the execution of the script to make it easy to follow along with what is being run specifically so that you can match up which lines of code are about to be executed next. And you can do so by holding down command or control um, and then clicking on this line and it'll jump you to that specific section which is about to be executed. For example, uh, this, this line in the output corresponds to this line in the code, right? Um, and uh, clicking on this jumps you to that specific line. So that makes it easy. All right, so for configuring new HTS token, right? Um, for this, we'll be using token create transaction from the Hedera SDK and each of the chain methods underneath of it um, set specific properties of the token about to be created. The set token type method is uh, probably the most consequential as it determines whether you've got a fungible token similar to ERC-20 or a non-fungible token similar to ERC-721. Set token name and set token symbol 
set the name and the symbol um, of the token, right? In this case, we're using the name of the script, so token HTS, followed by the word coin as a name, and just all uppercase token HTS as the symbol. Um, these are essentially display properties of token and what you will see in a wallet's user interface or a block explorer's user interface. Set initial supply. Um, this method is used to set the amount of tokens that will be minted and the set decimals um, is used to set how precisely dividable the token should be. Here with 1 million for the initial supply and 2 for decimals, we're expecting 10,000 units. Think of it as being similar to 1 million cents being the same as $10,000. The set treasury account ID um, sets the account which will receive the initial supply of the tokens upon mint. And in this case, it is the main operator account. The set admin key um, sets the account which will be able to modify the properties or configuration of the token after the mint. In this case, we're using the private key of a different account. What all of this does is to create a transaction and we can extract the transaction ID from this and print that. For EVM developers, this is equivalent to a transaction hash. You see that um, this happens instantly because nothing has happened at the network. The transaction at this point only exists locally. So for transaction new HTS token it's over here um, let's run that. And this, this transaction, um, is, is almost ready to be submitted to the network. But before we do so, we need to sign it. Now, this particular transaction needs to have multiple signatures or a multi-sig because it has, uh, it, it needs, the transaction needs to be submitted by the operator account. But also, since it has an admin key, Right, that admin key also needs to sign it as well. So in this case, you do uh, use each of the keys called sign transaction on it and pass in the transaction as a parameter. You obtain two signatures and then on the transaction, you do dot add signature for both of those signatures. And, um, and then we have a properly signed signature. So therefore we have a uh, multi-sig going on here. Subsequently, we use the execute method and uh, on the signed transaction to get a submitted transaction. And this means that the Hedera testnet has received the signed transaction and the network nodes are validating it, running it through the hash graph consensus algorithm and finally adding it to the blockchain. Um, then we use dot get receipt uh, method on the submitted transaction to obtain the transaction receipt. The transaction receipt will contain the status of the transaction and we're expecting a success status here, as well as the ID of any entities created, in this case, the token ID. We extract the token ID from the receipt and print a hashcan URL and, ha and hashcan is uh, the network explorer and it's printed out over here. So use command click or control click to open this, um, this token URL in the browser tab. Here you'll see, um, in this new browser tab, you'll see hashcan.io slash testnet slash token followed by the token ID. This page shows us all the properties of the token that we have just created using the token create transaction via the header SDK in our script thus far. We see token HTS coin as the token name and token HTS in all caps as a token symbol. The treasury account is our operator account and the entire minted balance of 10,000 tokens with two decimal places, i.e. 1 million units of the token, um, has been sent to the operator account, as we can see here. Switching back to Gitpod, in the terminal, we see that the script has also written an artifacts.json file over here um, to disk. And this is not necessary um, for this task specifically and is intended to be used in the interoperability task uh, instead. So we'll come back to this file later. All right, moving on to configuring token association. In this next section, 
um, will be uh, using the token associate transaction to do so. In the EVM, when you have an ERC20 token, for example, you can transfer it to any account that you wish to, whether the recipient is aware of it or not. With HTS tokens, however, this is not the case. A recipient account essentially needs to whitelist which tokens they wish to transact with, and this concept is called token association. We'll use the token associate transaction for this. The transaction is far simpler. This transaction is far simpler than the previous one, and we only need to configure two properties. Set account ID um, method is used to set the recipient account. Set token IDs is used to set um, is used to set the token ID of the token that we have just created. And we use that to print a transaction hash in the output. So when we're ready, hit enter, and that will print out the transaction ID. Now in the next section, we're going to submit that transaction to the network, the token associate transaction. So let's go ahead and do that. As before, we now have our local transaction ready submitted to uh, ready to submit to the network. And again, we'll be begin by signing it um, using the private keys of the account involved and then submitting it to the network. And then we, uh, and then we get the transaction receipt. Now, this time there is a difference because we only need one signature. So in this case, we just use transaction.sign followed by a key. Since there's no multi-sig involved, it's, um, it's a single statement. All right, and the, uh, and the subsequent execute and get receipt methods are the same as before, follow the same pattern as before. Now we extract the transaction hash, and we use that to print out the hash scan URL of the transaction, which is over here. So hold down Command or Control and click on that. That will open it in a new browser tab, and we can see the transaction over here. And we see the type of the transaction as token associate. We see that the status is success. And we're satisfied that the transaction has actually gone through. All right, let's switch back to Gitpod. So in our next task, we would like to configure a token transfer over here. So if you have done a uh, HBAR transfer before, you'll notice that this is the same transaction type for both tokens in cryptocurrency. It is transfer transaction. So instead of calling uh, add HBAR transfer method, we'll use an add token transfer method instead. So for each, we need to specify the token ID, the um, account ID, and the amount to be transferred. Right. So for the amounts, we use negative amounts for uh, negative numbers for debited amounts, which means that this account is sending. Uh, units of the token out, and then we'll use positive numbers for credited amounts, which means that this account is receiving uh, units of the token. As long as the debits and credits add up to the same total, so negative 100 totals um, to the same as positive 100, or another way you can think about it is that the total of everything for the same token ID is equal to zero. So negative 100 plus 100 is equal to zero. So they tally. Right. In that case, the transaction is valid. Right. Um, so in this case, the operator account is a sender, and this um, this other account is the recipient. The send amount is 100, and the received amount is 100, and that tallies. So all good. So this creates a transaction locally, and we use that to print out the transaction ID. As before, we now have a local transaction and ready to submit to the network. Let's go ahead and do that. So over here, it's the same as before, following the same pattern as before. Sign the transaction, execute the transaction and submit it to the network, and then obtain the receipt. For following the exact same pattern as before. Now, we use that to extract the transaction status printed out as well as the transaction ID, print out a hash scan URL. And now we can uh, hold down command or control, click on it, and open that up in a new browser tab. And we can see a transaction, um, which is successful, of type crypto transfer. So this page shows us all the properties of the transfer transaction. 
right? Um, under the transfers section over here, uh, we can see HBAR transfers and these essentially are just uh, transaction fees, right? So this is not involving the recipient account at all. Um, but over here, we see token transfers, which shows um, 100 units of the token with two decimal places. So exactly one token um, of token HTS being debited from the operator account and uh, being received by the other account, i.e. going from the operator account to the other account. All right, let's switch back to Gitpod. And now we see that our token HTS task is complete and congratulations on making it this far. Time to choose your own adventure. Click on one of the following videos linked on the screen or in the description once you have made your pick. If you're not done the HSCS token task yet, I recommend doing that one next. Otherwise, I recommend doing the interrupt task next. Either way, see you in the next one. In this task, you will deploy a new fungible token on Hedera Smart Contract Service and transfer it from one account to another. You'll be using VM, SOLC, JSON RPC, and Solidity to create, compile, deploy, verify, and interact with the token. Hi, I'm Brendan, DevRel Engineer at Hashgraph, and I'll be walking you through this task. Please do follow along as you watch this video, as this is intended to be hands-on. All you need are a browser and a GitHub account. To do so, simply visit github.com slash dev slash tokens cyoa tutorial or scan the QR code on the screen now. This, will, this is part of the Choose Your Own Adventure Style Hedera Tokens tutorial where you'll learn how to mint and transfer tokens the EVM way, the Hedera native way, and even another interoperable way with both at the same time. Let's begin this task by opening the file um, in Gitpod. So let's switch to the Gitpod tab, open up token HSCS, uh, and open script token HSCS. This is the script that we're going to run. Note the import statements at the top over here specifically. Um, this is a standard EVM library called VM and can be used to interact with any EVM network such as Ethereum um, and with HSCS on Hedera. We will not be using the Hedera SDK at all in the script. Go to the terminal over here and type in the following commands. cd token HSCS CD token HSCS um, and then type dot slash script slash token HSCS dot JS. All right, this starts running the script and you will see some initial output that indicates that uh, the script has started running and confirmation that it has parsed some information from the dot in file. Next, you'll see a line in purple with a line underneath it saying, hit the return key when ready to proceed. These pause the execution of the script to make it easy to follow along with what is being run, specifically so that you can match up which lines of code are about to be executed next. Um, and to do so, just hit, uh, hold down Command or Control and click on the file line, and that will jump you to the section uh, directly where the code is about to be executed. So this line of code here, in the output corresponds to this line of code here in the source file. For example, um, these logger lines. So note that instead of initializing a client object via the Hedera SDK, we will be initializing a client object using the create wallet client method, which is over here, right? So this is a VM, um, method instead of a Hedera SDK method. Um, and to do so, we pass in the operator account details that have been read in, read in from the .in file, as well as a config for Hedera testnet, which essentially points to the Hedera JSON RPC relay instance that is hopefully running in the background. And you can see it on this tab over here, this terminal over here. All right. So let's move on to sol checking Solidity smart contract source code. In this next section, we'll be checking that the Solidity smart contract source code is available. So let's open a file named mytoken.sol. Right. 
Um, and this is a very minimal ERC20 implementation. And what we'll be doing over here is printing out the first few characters of that file as a quick sense check. So you see here that we've got the first line, it's been truncated from the Solidity file. So all good. Next, we'll load up the EVM bytecode plus ADI, which are the outputs of the Solidity compiler. Now, this is going to error because we have not yet compiled the Solidity file and therefore the .abi, the .bin files that it's looking for, that the script is expecting, are not available on disk. So we'll see the error now. There you go. So no such file or directory, etc. Right? And there's our error. To rectify this, let's compile the Solidity file and then rerun the script. So to do so, we can do npm run, and as a convenience, we have these available, right? So what we want is to run npm run compile smart contract. And that runs salt.cjs with the ABI and bin flags on this Solidity file as an input, and that outputs the ABI file and the bin file. Right. Uh, let's just quickly take a peek at it. Right. So this ABI file is JSON. It is human readable. It is essentially the interface, the publicly exposed interface of the smart contract. Um, if uh, or when it is deployed to the network. The ABI file, sorry, the bin file is EVM bytecode, and this is intended to be executed by the virtual machine uh, on HCS once it has been deployed. All right, so let's close those files. All right, now we'll rerun the script. So go back, type dot slash script followed by, uh, hit the tab key for autocomplete and you get token HSCS. Let's run that script again. So again, um, reading in the source code and that exists, same as before. And now this time we're expecting this to not error but succeed instead. So it loads up the EVM bytecode um, and ABI is output, a truncated version of the ABI, a truncated version of the bytecode. And it's also giving you a summary of the ABI. So it's got one constructor, two events and 13 functions. Um, defined in the ABI. Next, we'll perform a check for the JSON RPC endpoint liveness, essentially checking the RPC relay that's running in this terminal over here is indeed actually running and working. So let's do that. And what this does is it makes two uh, JSON RPC requests for get block number and get balance of uh, one of the accounts that we're interacting with and it's just outputting those over here So we can see that that's the current block number and that's the balance and we can go and check that in Hashcan if we wanted to All right, so submit EVM transaction over RPC relay to deploy bytecode um, So in this sec in this section, we're actually going to submit our uh, first transaction, which is a deployment transaction um, so we've got the bytecode to deploy in hand and the RPC connection running at this point, so we're ready to deploy it. So we'll submit an EVM transaction over RPC, and to do so, we use the client.deployContract method from VM um, and pass in the bytecode that we've read in earlier and the ABI that we've read in earlier. And we're also going to pass in some constructor arguments, um, which in this case are the token symbol and the token name and this results in a transaction hash over here so let's go ahead and do that and we use the transaction hash to print out a hash scan url right now this will take uh longer than most other transactions of the Dara because a deployment transaction is particularly um computationally intense so let's just wait for that Excellent. So we'll see, we see that we've got a hash scan transaction URL. So this is the deployment transaction. And we've also got the URL for the smart contract itself. Um, let's hold down command or control and click on the smart contract hash scan URL. Open that up in a new tab. And we'll see here that we have a smart contract at this particular address and this particular um, ID. 
Now, it's good to know that it's here, but this is not particularly useful to us at the moment because we just see a whole bunch of bytecode that isn't particularly um, useful to us. We can't, we can't really read it. And we'll even see an event section over here where we just see you know, more hexadecimal data, but not actual human readable or interpretable data. So for now, let's switch back to Gitpod and we'll verify the smart contract and source the file, right? So there is a solution to this over here, right? This um, human unreadable um, bytecode on the block explorer, or on, the, on the network explorer, right? So verification is the idea that you submit the source code of the smart contract to the network explorer, in this case, Hashcan, which will then independently verify if that smart contract source code does indeed correspond to the EVM bytecode that has already been deployed to this particular address. If verification passes, in addition to the EVM bytecode that was previously already there, uh, already being displayed, the Network Explorer should now also be able to display the ABI and the Solidity source code. Hashcan, which is the Network Explorer that we're using, exposes an API to do this programmatically via its own implementation of Sourceify. This has been wrapped up into a utility function called Verify on Sourceify. Sometimes it does that. Called Verify on Sourceify. Um, and we can check out what it does under the hood if we like. So let's go ahead and run that. So it says, send a verification request for mytoken.sold to, um, to the Sourceify instance that's running on Hashcat, which is this. And then uh, we see the contract with this address has a verification status of perfect. So what we'll want to do now is go back to Hashcan, exact same um, URL tab that we had opened before, and we'll see that this was not verified. Now let's go ahead and refresh this page and we'll see same contract, but this time it is verified. And in addition to the bytecode that we had previously, now we also have the source code, which matches you know, uh, what, the, what we sent into the Solidity compiler. And also we have the API, which shows you what all the functions are, right? And this is in fact um, an interactive form. So you can actually, uh, query and send transactions to the smart contract if you wanted to, right? So you'll also notice that the verification status is a full match, right? Which means that it's uh, matched exactly. Right, so now if you look at the event section below, um, we'll notice that something has changed here as well. So instead of arbitrary hexadecimal values, which are still being displayed, We'll also notice interpreted values um, that have been extracted from the ABI. So this is possible because um, the verification process submits the original Solidity source code and the compiler settings. And so this allows Hashcan to not only have the source code, but also the ABI. Now verification um, uses that to infer from the signature hash that this is a transfer event and also that topic one and topic two happen to correspond to an address and also correspond to another address, to and from addresses. And then also I value the amount um, of this particular token that's being minted in this particular case. All right, so verification makes this smart contract page in Hashcan so much more useful and user-friendly. Right. Let's move, uh, switch back to Gitpod now. So now we're going to submit an EVM transaction over to RPC to uh, transfer a token balance. So now we have our ERC20 token smart contract deployed on Hedera testnet and verified in Hashcan to boot. It is time to interact with it. Let's start by transferring some tokens from our operator account to another account. We do so by submitting an EVM transaction over RPC. We use the write contract method from VM to, to do so. And we pass in the deployed address of the smart contract as well as its ABI. And then we also specify the smart contract function as well as the arguments. 
Um, in this case, the function name is transfer. Uh, that's the ERC20 ABI transfer method, and uh, which also requires uh, parameters or input arguments of the recipient address as well as the amount. So let's go ahead and do that, submit the transaction, wait for the network to process it, and there we go. So this took much shorter time to execute than the deployment because it's not as computationally heavy. And we can see that um, based on the transaction hash, we're able to output a transaction, uh, sorry, a hash given URL as well as a uh, status. So let's go ahead and open that up in a new tab by using command or control click. And so we can see this transaction over here. So we'll see that the type is Ethereum transaction. And note that this is because all transactions within the EVM in HSCS need to be translated or proxied into Hedera native transactions. This is accomplished by the Hedera JSON RPC relay. See HIP 482 for more about the architecture of the JSON RPC relay system. We also see that the status is success. Um, over here, which means that the smart contract function implication was successful and the, that the intended state change has indeed occurred. In the contract result section, we also see that the status is success, which means that the smart, um, sorry, and we see that all the fields of the EVM transaction, um, and I'll just highlight a few. Right. So the from address is the operator account, and the to address um, is the smart contract address of the ERC20 token. The signature identifies which function of the smart contract is being invoked. In this case, it is the transfer transaction as noted here. The input lists the parameters passed into the smart contract function. In this case, the recipient account address and the amount of tokens. Note that the, the recipient address here is different from the to address here. So the transaction in the to, that's actually the smart contract address. And inside the input, the recipient address is the other account that's receiving the tokens. Um, sometimes these are easy to get mixed up, so just wanted to highlight that. The output section list the return values from the smart contract function invocation, in this case true, because the transfer was successful. Let's take a look at the event section below, and we see an event log. The first field is a signature hash, which identifies that this is a transfer function. The second field is a from, that's the sender of the tokens, which is this address, our operator account. And the third field is to, which is um, the EVM address of the other account, the recipient account. And the final one is the value, that's the amount of tokens that have been transferred. All right, let's, uh, let's switch back to Gitpod. At this point, we have interacted with the network twice and both times we have changed the state of the network. The first time was to deploy the new smart contract the second time was to invoke a smart contract, a function on that smart contract. But this is not the only type of interaction possible. We can also interact with um, we can also interact with uh, the network without changing its state. In other words, simply querying its state. So the submit even request of RPC to uh, query the token balance. Let's do just that by um, submitting an EVM query over RPC. To do so, we use the read contract method on the client and pass in the address, um, the ABI, and function name and arguments. In this case, the function name is balance of from the ERC20 ABI, and the arguments is the recipient um, account, um, the other account that just received the tokens that were transferred in the previous transaction. And we use that to um, output the result. So let's go ahead and do that. This should be much faster because there's no network state involved. And we can see over here that we use that to um, output the thing, uh, the result. And we see over here 100N 
the end here indicates that this is a big number corresponds roughly the JavaScript corresponds uh, or equivalent of a big integer, a big in I should say, uh, corresponds to um, UN 256 in the in, in solidity or EPM. All right. Over here we see that the token HSCS task is complete. Congratulations on making it this far. Time to choose your own adventure. Click on one of the following videos linked on the screen or in the description once you've made your pick. If you've not done the HCS token task yet, I recommend doing that one next. Otherwise, I recommend doing the interrupt task next. Either way, see you in the next one. In this task, you will use the fungible token that you have previously deployed to Hedera token service and interact with it via Hedera smart contract service. You'll be using VM and JSON RPC to interact with the token with interoperability provided through the HCS system contract on HSCS. Hi, I'm Brendan, DevRel engineer at Hashgraph, and I'll be walking you through this task. Please do follow along as you watch this video as this is intended to be hands-on. All you need are a browser and a GitHub account. To do so, simply visit github.com slash hederadev slash hederatokencyoa tutorial or scan the QR code on the screen now. This is part of the Choose Your Own Adventure Style Hedera Token tutorial where you will learn how to mint and transfer tokens the EVM way, the Hedera native way, and even another interoperable way with both at the same time. Let's switch to Git, Gitpod and open the token interrupt um, folder and open the script token interrupt.js file. This is the script that we will be running um, for this tutorial. Now in the terminal, cd uh, token interrupt and then type dot slash script um, and then hit tab and it will auto complete for you and then run that and this starts running the script. Right? Um, now note the import statements at the top Right, where we'll be using, making use of the VM library. This is a standard EVM library and can be used to interact with any EVM network such as Ethereum and in this case with HSCS on Hedera as well. We will not be using the Hedera SDK in the script. So now that we've started running the script, we'll see the output. Welcome to the token interrupt task. Now this starts running the script and you will see some initial output that indicates that the .n file has been read in successfully. Now you will see an, uh, a reminder over here to complete both the token HTS and token HSCS tasks before running the script, right? Um, uh, and hopefully you have done so. If not, you will have to manually create the ADI file as well as um, the artifacts file at which a um, uh, at which the token HTS file has been deployed previously, right? So either way, hit return. All right, next you'll see a line in purple with a line underneath it saying, um, hit the return key when ready to proceed. These, uh, this pauses the execution of the script to make it easy to follow along with what is being executed. Um, so take note that in this script, we'll be interacting with an HTS token, but we will do so via HSCS. Therefore, we'll be using the VM library to construct EVM transactions and queries instead of using the header SDK. Okay, so for obtain EVM address of existing HTS fungible token, which corresponds with this section over here, right? Um, we'll read in an artifacts.json file and this would have been created via the token HTS script and from this we'll extract the EVM address of the HTS token and we'll use this to print uh, a hashcan URL now hold down command and click or control click to open up this URL in hashcan and you'll notice that this was the token HTS um, that was generated, uh, that, that, that we deployed from a script earlier on, right? And we can see um, that we have balances in our main account as well as the other account that we've already done transfer to. 
Right. So let's switch back to Gitpod. And for loading ABI salty outputs, this is uh, where uh, this is where we the ABI file and the EVM uh, the ABI file sorry that would have been output by running the Solidity compiler earlier on, and we can see here that we've got the truncated um, file that's been read in the raw file, and then we parse it, and so we've got a constructor, two events, and thirteen functions from this particular ABI. So you should see output that's similar to this. Next up. We're checking for JSON RPC endpoint liveness. We're just checking that the RPC relay that's, run, that's running this terminal is indeed actually running. So let's go ahead and do that. So what's happening here is we're querying the block number um, and the balance and seeing if uh, we get the we do indeed get the, the values that we expect, right? All right. So. Next up, we're going to submit an EVM transaction over RPC to transfer HTS token balance. And this will demonstrate HSTS interoperability of HTS itself. All right, so, um, it's time to interact with this uh, HTS token via HSTS. Now, we'll note that the reason that this interoperability between HTS and HSCS is even possible is because there is a system contract, system, sometimes also known as a pre-compiled contract, for HTS available on HSCS. This allows HTS functionality to be invoked via HSCS. See HIP 206 titled Hedera Token Service Pre-compiled Contract for Hedera Smart Contract Service for more details on this. However, the exposed interface of the HTS system contract corresponds to the interface of HTS itself. Notably, this is different from, and therefore incompatible with, the interface for fungible tokens specified in ERC-20. Thankfully, HSCS also provides a facade, a facade redirect facility which performs the necessary translations or proxies from an ERC-20 smart contract function invocation to the equivalent HTS system contract function invocation. This allows us to interact with the HTS token's EVM address directly using the ERC-20 ABR, as if there were an actual ERC-20 smart contract applied to that address. See HIP-218 titled Smart Contract Interactions with Hedera Token Accounts for more details about this. Now for submit um, EVM transaction over RPC to transfer HTS token balance. Now that we know why this work, why this works, let's perform a transfer transaction and see it in action. We'll transfer some tokens from our operator account to another account. And we do so by submitting an EVM transaction over RPC. We use the write contract method on the client and pass in <coughs> the EVM address of the HTS token, the ERC20 ABI, the function name and function arguments, which in this case are the transfer method from the ERC20 ABI, as well as the recipient account EVM address, as well as an amount of 100 units of the token. Now this returns a transaction hash, which we use to print the hashcan URL for the smart contract function invocation. In other words, the transfer transaction. Once again, note that there is no smart contract deployed at this address, right? At this address, there is no smart contract. There is instead a, an HTS token. Um, and the only reason that this transaction is able to work is because of the HTS system contract in HSCS as per HIP 206 as well as the facade redirect facility as per HIT 218 described earlier. So let's go ahead and do that. So that submits the EVM transaction and we're waiting for that to process. Now let's open up this um, hashcan URL. In the new browser tab, we'll see hashcan.io slash testnet slash transaction followed by the transaction hash. And we see that the type here is Ethereum transaction. 
Note that this is because all transactions within the EVM and HSCS need to be translated or proxied into Hedera native transactions. This is accomplished via the Hedera JSON RPC relay. See HIT 482 for more about the architecture of the JSON RPC relay system. We also see that the status is success, which means that the smart contract function invocation was successful and the intended state change has indeed occurred. In the contract result section, we see all of the fields of an EVM transaction, highlighting a few of them. The from address is the operator account. The to address is the address of the smart contract, which in this case actually is the HTS token, not a smart contract. The signature is the identifier of the function of the smart contract which is being involved. In this case, not actually a smart contract, but um, it, it is using a smart contract or ERC20 ABI as if it were a smart contract. The input is essentially the uh, function arguments. So we have an address, which is the recipient account, and the amount, which is the amount of token units to transfer. Note that the to field on the transaction is not the same as a recipient um, address. Right, the two field is a smart contract, or in this case, a um, uh, HTS token address, and the two field here is the actual recipient address. Um, so these are sometimes mixed up. Just wanted to point that out. Now the output in this case is the return result of the of the invocation, which in this case is true, um, because the transfer was indeed successful. Now in the event section we see an event log. The first field is the signature hash, which identifies that it's a transfer. The second and third field identify the to and from addresses. And the final field is the amount or value of the amount of tokens that are being transferred. Now, um, if you have completed the token HSCS task prior to this, you'll notice something different in the call trace transaction over here. The difference is small and perhaps easy to miss, but very much significant. We can see that underneath the main call, there is a delegate call this time. And this is where we see HIP206 and HIP218 in action. Look at the from and to um, uh, values right, uh, of EVM addresses in each line. First, for the call, is our from address of the operator account. And the to address is that of the HTS token. But there is no smart contract at this address, so the facade redirect facility of HIP218 kicks in. And this is what triggers the delegate call from which the HTS token... So, so we see the from address being the HTS token address, and the to address is 0x0167, which is a system contract um, for Hedera token service or the HTS system contract. Right, this is where the execution goes from HSCS to HTS, uh, sorry, from HSCS to HTS as per HIT 206. And the equivalent of the transfer transaction with the add token transfer from the Hedera SDK gets executed over here, right? And it was triggered via a HSCS um, call to an HTS token. The other thing that we may have noticed is that in the transfers section, over here, we only saw HBAR transfers for the transaction fees. But where are the token transfers? We might expect to see that here, right? And the reason for that is connected to the fact that we have a call and a delicate call. So there's actually going to be a child transaction in this particular case. Right? So we see right at the top that for a transaction, over here we see child transactions and we see number one, crypto transfer of token, H uh, token HTS. So let's um, click on that and that navigates us to the child transaction. And we can see the parent transaction which goes back to the previous one. So here we see that we also have a transfer section, but in this case we do not have transfer HBAR since this is a child transaction, but we do have a token transfer listed over here. And here, as we might expect, we will see the operator account being debited 
100 units of the token with two decimal places, so one token HDS, and the recipient account, which is the other account, receiving one uh, token HDS as well. So that's where the token transfer happens. All right, let's switch back to Gitpod and enter the main terminal again. So this time, we're going to submit an EVM request over RPC to query the token balance. So in this case, we're doing a read contract, right, and from, from VM, and we're passing in the HTS tokens EVM address, the token ABI, and a function name and function arguments, in this case, the balance of um, method from the ERC20 ABI, and the um, parameter, the input parameter of the balance sum function, we are passing in the recipient address. And then we print that out in the output. So let's go ahead and do that. So you can see here that the balance of the query result is 200. Um, and this is because if you have previously transferred, and now this is the second transfer of the HTS token, we'll see that um, instead of 100, we have 200. And you know that's the expected output. Note that the n here, suffix in the suffix, is a JavaScript notation for big uh, big number, which in uh, which which is used to represent u in 256 type from solidity, because the regular number in JavaScript can represent numbers at large. All right, so we see that the token interrupt task is complete, and that demonstrates that the interoperability between HTS and HSCS. So congratulations on making it this far. Time to choose your own adventure. Click on one of the following videos linked on the screen or in the description once you have made your pick. Chances are you have probably already completed all of the other tasks. If so, congratulations on completing all of them and therefore completing the Hedera Tokens tutorial. In this task, you will run out the task for this tutorial by taking a look at metrics and shutting down the project cleanly. Hi, I'm Brendan, DevRel Engineer at Hashgraph and I'll be walking you through this task. Please do follow along as you watch this video as it is intended to be hands-on. All you need are a browser and a GitHub account. To do so, simply visit github.com slash hederadev slash hederatoken cyoa tutorial or scan the QR code on the screen now. This is part of the Choose Your Own Adventure Style Hedera Tokens tutorial where you'll learn how to mint and transfer tokens the EVM way, the Hedera native way, and even another interoperable way with both at the same time. We've noticed that each time we run a script using Gitbot, we see summary metrics um, section printed at the end. This helps us to understand how quickly we have managed to set up and compile each of these tasks and how long we have taken to complete all the tasks thus far. It even shows us how many errors we made along the way. Let's take a look at it. So the time to first task completion Right, is the time taken to complete the setup script plus complete the very first task. This is sometimes known as time to hello world. The time to all task completion is the total duration taken to complete the setup script plus complete all of the tasks. This gives us an idea of how complex the tutorial is. The rest of the output gives us more granular information about the task. Right? So one of the more important things uh, that I look out for is how many errors were there prior to completion. So in this case, uh, for token HTS encountered one error and then had to retry again. In, t in the case of token HTS, also one error, but in the case of interrupt, got it right on the first try. Right? Now, before we wrap up, there is one more thing. We're running Gitpod, which is a cloud, develop uh, cloud development environment, and this is built per unit of time usage. Um, if we're on the free plan, we're using up the limited number of free hours, and if we're on the pay plan, we might be incurring some sort of pain. Therefore, it's always a good idea to remember to terminate the Gitpod instance as soon as we're done. To do so, let's click on the triple line icon um, in the top right corner. In the menu, select Gitpod Stop Workspace. We'll see a spinner, a bouncing logo, while Gitpod shuts down this instance. Click on Go to Dashboard. Click on the Go to Dashboard button, and this takes us to a list of workspaces. Identify the one that we have been using by clicking on the, and then click on the vertical ellipses, the three dots, and then um, here we can select Open to restart the same GitPod workspace and continue working where we left off, if this is what we'd like to do. But for now, since we do not intend to do that, select the Delete um, option in this menu to delete this instance. 
and then press the delete workspace. Um, all right, we have completed this tutorial. Let's do a recap. We, you have learned how to create a fungible token using the Hedera SDK on Hedera token servers. We have learned how to create an ERC20 token using Solidity and VM on Hedera Smart Contract Service, or HSCS. And we've also discovered how to use HTS and HSCS in an interoperable way um, um, to essentially operate a, an HTS token via Hedera Smart Contract Service using Hedera system contracts um, in between them. Congratulations on completing the Choose Your Own Adventure tutorial for minting and transferring tokens on Hedera.